mental health is still not actually fully understood. Like, I, I do a bit about this, but, like, yeah. it's 2020 fucking three, do you know what I mean? Like, how is mental health not a priority at this point? What, did uh, we not realize after the First World War, or did we not realize way before when fucking the Mongolians slaughtered half of Europe? I'm like, <laughs> maybe we got issues, guys. Great people. <laughs> maybe... <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be fucking stiff upper lipping a genocide uh, or whatever. Mate, it's obviously the main thing they go is like it's it's men don't know how to talk. Right? It's like I mate, I'm I'm at a conflicting place, right? But I am and I'm a bit biased towards this, right? Right. But when you tell your bitch that you're depressed, her vagina dries up. Not necessarily, but I can see how in some cases that could be a problem. I see, I have a, a it's a bit that I'm thinking about in my mind, but obviously there's always talk about the patriarchy, mm-hmm. right? And fair, but also in a patriarchy, who raises the kids? Me. In, no, in, in a, patri- <laughs> in a patriarchal yeah. society, technically the women would be raising the children. So that means the first seven years of emotional development that you would get, or the first, you know, as a boy, mm-hmm. would be from your mum, because your dad out working, yeah? Uh-huh. So who's teaching you? To quite, not be open. Yeah, because uh-huh. because the kids are bullying each other. Like, I remember, like, back home in Romania, we'd be making fun of each other for, like, we'd have songs and poems we'd say to each other for if another kid was crying, like, especially a boy. Yeah. See, mate, and like that's a fucking three, four year old <laughs> child that's already told you're not a girl. Yeah. And who say it's not just your dad? Like I'm sorry, you can't fully put all the blame on the dads on this one. I think the main issue with my dad is was he, I was, mean, ho- he was home too often. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Too you've, often. You've told me about your dad. Yeah. Well, I well, you are your biological dad. Yeah. For the but record, I thought it's more it, like my. Uh, my dad, my biological dad, basically had just raped and attacked everyone in the house. That mm. is basically and my my circumstance is different from a lot of people, man. But it's I try and tell people, see when like, people try and tell me stuff, and they'll go, "Oh, but it's nowhere near as bad as yours." And I'm like, "But we're not in competition, mate." And I was like, "You have suffered from your own stuff, and yeah. I suffered from mine." But the priority is, are you okay? <laughs> like, are you okay yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. No, we got some. Uh, we got some light-hearted stuff. Yeah, we probably should. I'm trying to think why I wanted to talk to you about. No more depression. No more depression. Oh, well, probably not, man. Uh, Who's? Uh, but what? if you are depressed out there, get help. Go therapy. Go, to go therapy. therapy. Get help. Don't. Yeah. I'm actually planning to do a series of React TikToks and videos of some of the dumbest mental health advice I see on social media. Mate, there's one where uh, Sam Morrell's got a joke about it, and right. apparently if you go eat nuts, right. it makes you not depressed, and he's like, oh, I remember going to go, like, hang myself, and then I'm rummaging through my pocket, and I look down, and I go, oh, thank God there's a bag of nuts there, I don't want to kill myself anymore. <laughs> yeah, now there's, like, if what... Yeah, last night I spent a couple of hours just looking at some of the weirdest fucking advice... Aye. I'm gonna react to some of them. It's just free content, man. But Mate, these one guy, I saw, I saw this one guy who was like, "Listen, if you get came through addiction or depression, you got something in you because there's people that yeah, did depression." Wait, wait. There was like, but there's people that didn't pull, like they tried, but they didn't get it through. That means you're special. You know, there's something about you. And I'm like, do you just put down fucking Chester Bennington and Robin <laughs> Williams? I'm like, nah, these pussies. Like, oh, so what they're trying to say is it's like if, if you if you made it through it, then, you know, you're strong, you're someone, you know, fucking good for you. See all these other people that f- couldn't make it because life was just too much at that time. Yeah, but I think there's there's two main things here. right? Um, oh. Chester Bennington had came out and said, I can't be alone. Can't be alone in his mind. Mm. Right, you can't be alone. Otherwise, it takes over, and he's got to kill himself. Robin Williams was also a drug addict. I mean, he talks about it, yeah. He's so that's how his was the equilibrium or whatever it is. Yeah, he, all the, he talked up. about how after yeah, the, all that cocaine use has messed with his brain. Yeah, that's how he is. He's on a permanent come down. <laughs> that, yeah. That's how he had. But these guys have told these guys are, were screaming. 
for mm. help. And people just thought, oh, it's entertaining. They're screaming for help, mate. There's, there's the video, uh, I can't remember, the, it was during Mrs. Doubtfire. And once Robin Williams had finished his performance, he would go into his changing room and the, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the saddest man ever. Yeah, the, yeah, I saw that same clip where the guy's like, yeah, and he's just... It's, mate, it's so difficult to go and just get the help because of that part of your brain's just wanting you to die. Yeah. That's what it is. But you need it, man. You need to just... Mate, and it's work. Like, I have... Mate, Paddy, Paddy, he has disorder. He says it as well. He's like, you can't just turn up to one session. It's what you do between those sessions as well. It's yeah, continuous of work. I, th- I think that's what people don't understand about it, of, like, the lived experience of it. It's like, oh, they're just get help, just go to therapy. It's like, but imagine every step of the way to therapy, there's a big voice in your head going, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Like everything you do, there's constantly this fucking, you're getting heckled. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so yeah, your bra- a part of your brain's going, na 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 And you're just trying to get through your fucking day. And no, no wonder you're fucking exhausted. You're literally trying to ignore a part of you. Uh, you're mentally drained all the time. All right. So that's why, again, if but it gets better bros but it does get better it does mate it's fuck yes. look at me I'm fucking alive mate yes and that's what life is all about yeah, man being homophobic just no <laughs> oh no sorry I mean uh, being not depressed just you know just go on a podcast and tell everyone you're not a homophobe because that will prove it to you hey guys I'm straight but I'm not homophobic <laughs> oh man you know how to say the wrongest thing at the the worst of times I love fucking around, mate. I know, I know. I love it.